Here's something that I've learned. This uh, sweet potato here, it was from a Beauregard sweet potato, the, the orange fleshed ones that you buy from the fruit shop. It survived the winter here, the plant I mean. I don't know about, I'm not interested in the tubers, I grow them for their leaves uh, to eat like a salad. But um, I was happy to discover that it could survive uh, the whole frosty winter. I thought it was dead, but it came back up. And so did this moringa tree, that's another salad leaf plant. And it survived too. It survived. And I'm in the Lachlan Valley where we have quite cold, quite cold uh, winter temperatures. And uh, the cat water gets frozen and the bird bath gets frozen. So I was very happy to discover that. And that means I can always have, uh, well, lettuces aren't always handy in a place like this in summertime. And uh, sweet potato are quite tough, aren't they? And the moringa can grow into a tree. Even if it dies back down again each year from the cold, if it's too cold it can just come up again. And from the base, so that's handy. And I'll look at another sweet potato. So here's another little sweet potato. And that's a nice leaf that could be eaten on Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oops. Lovely tender leaves that I could eat in a salad. And it can survive the winter. Now I suppose I could grow in, uh, small tubers in summertime, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in them as a nice leafy green vegetable. I'm not interested in a starchy tuber. You can see here that these sweet potatoes haven't got much in the way of uh, tubers on them anyway. But they have survived as little plants. They have. They've survived as little plants over the winter. And they're a lovely salad vegetable. And here's another little moringa tree that came up from last year. It's one of last year's and it survived the cold winters here. So I'm in the Lachlan Valley as I say and we have quite cold temperatures. But it's handy to know that Australians can, in some cold regions at least, we can have moringas that will survive outdoors, uh, that will survive the winter and come up again. And we can have sweet potatoes that will come up again too. And they're nice salad greens, aren't they? These lovely tomatoes came out from seeds. I left a few seeds in that spot and they came up all right. Aren't they lovely? These are the wild tomatoes. Is it Lycopersicum pimpinella folium or something? They are lovely. They've got a nice strong flavor and they're beautiful and delicious and just bite size. Excellent. Excellent. Lots of them. We're going to have to pick lots of tomatoes this afternoon, aren't we? We are. Otherwise the birds will eat them. They will. Some birds eat tomatoes, not all. <laughs> I don't think parrots really like tomatoes, but I think they will eat them if there's nothing, they'll, have, they'll try them if there's nothing else going. Well, it is fun growing a few tomatoes, isn't it? I think I should grow them indoors, upstairs, I think. I think next winter I might grow some upstairs indoors because it's warm enough and light enough up there. I'll use it as a greenhouse, I think. That'll be nice. I think it's time for a nice tomato sandwich. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Tomato with lettuce or with uh, sweet potato leaf would be nice, wouldn't it? Watercress leaves would be nice. Yummy. And this is what, mid-January, mid to late January, down under. 